Hey guys, Shane here with eTrower.com. Today I want to walk you through how to install the Optitronics 4-pole wishbone wiring harness. This is going to give you a new wiring kit to run on your trailer if you're having issues with your lighting functions. Wires just getting old. Um, as you see, we have a boat trailer here. Getting it down in the water a lot of times where they're connected will start to corrode. The wire will start to get hard and it will start breaking really easy. This is a very easy way to rewire your trailer. It's going to give you a four pole connection at the front and it's going to give you a yellow and brown wire and a green and brown wire. The reason they call it a wishbone is because they split that brown wire to where it goes down each frame rail to each tail light. And it makes it very easy to connect your side marker lights and your run or all of your lights in the back of your trailer without having to run it down one side and then across to the other. It makes it very easy to make all the connections. As I mentioned, it's going to give you your four pole plug. It's going to give you your running lights, both turn signals, and your brake lights. It's also going to give you a 42 inch ground wire. So it's going to go from your plug all the way through the wire loom. You can see where I have it connected here. So we got plenty of length to get it connected to our vehicle if our plug on our vehicle uh, is a little bit farther away. Plenty of room. It's also going to give us 40 foot of wire. So uh, this boat trailer is, or the actual boat is 24 foot. So the trailer, you can see how far the tongue sticks out a little bit farther. 40 foot gives us plenty of extra length to not only connect to each one of our side marker lights, but to get back to the back to give us extra wire in the back to connect to our tail lights. What I will say is as you're running your wiring, uh, when you go to replace or go to remove your side marker lights and your tail lights, if they're incandescent and when you pull them off, they're corroded at all, I would replace them. And I would replace them with submersible LED lights because you're not gonna have to have or you're not gonna have bulbs you're gonna have to replace with LEDs and they're gonna last about 50 times longer than regular incandescent lights. As far as the installation process, very simple, straightforward. A uh, Couple of things you, all, you will need to get your installation completed that uh, does not come with your wiring. If you're replacing your lights, you're going to need self tappers uh, for your ground wires. Uh, you're also, I'm also going to recommend heat shrink butt connectors instead of quick splice connectors because again, being a boat trailer inside the frame, when this goes down in the water, the frame gets water inside of it with the quick splice connectors. They're not sealed at all. So wherever it pinches or squeezes into that wire through that coating, the water getting on that open wire is going to eventually cause it to corrode and you're going to end up having problems later on. With heat shrink butt connectors, it uh, seals where that connection is and then you won't have any water getting on the connection itself and then you have the rest of the coating on the wire to protect the wiring. So again, I recommend heat shrink butt connectors, ring terminals, and self tappers. You can find all those here at eTrailer.com. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our wiring, let's go ahead and walk you through how we got it installed. To start our installation, our wishbone wiring is going to have two different sides. You're going to have a yellow with the brown wire and you're going to have a green with the brown wire. Green with brown goes to the right side, yellow with brown goes to the left side or the driver's side. What we're doing is we're going to take our old four pole plug and we're going to cut it off. You can see I've, I went ahead and already disconnected the ground wire from the frame. I'm going to use this wire to pull my new wire through my frame to each side marker light and the rear light to get everything hooked up together. So now I'm going to take the end of it and I'm going to tape it onto my old wire just like this. Put a little bit of tape on there to hold it. Then we can come back to our first side marker light. We'll go ahead and pull our wire through. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull it all the way through because I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough of my wire to get to the back of my trailer. All we're going to do is we're going to cut this light off. Get rid of the old one. So when I cut my wire off, the old wire, I cut it and left it out long enough 
went ahead and taped the end of my new wire to it. Now I'm going to take my new wire coming from the front here. I'm going to cut it like that. And then we're going to strip back both the yellow and the brown. And we're going to tie these together. One thing I want to point out, the light that I am putting in actually has a turn signal in it. If the light you are putting in, or if you're not replacing a light, um, and you're just putting one in that's just the side marker light, you don't need to cut your yellow wire, your green for your passenger side. You only need to cut the brown, because the brown is for your running lights. The yellow wire is for your break and turn signal. Since I'm putting a light in that has a turn signal function, I am cutting the yellow so I can tie the extra wire into it. Heat shrink buck connector. If you don't have any, highly suggest getting them and using them since this is a boat trailer and uh, with this running inside the frame, there's a few holes along the frame so water will get in here and get on the wiring and you want to protect these connections the best way you can. If you don't have any, you can find them here at eTrailer.com. Now we'll take our light and get it hooked up. If your light has a turn signal, it'll have a, a black and red wire and a white wire if it's LED for your ground. If it's not LED, it's just going to have a black wire and again you're just going to tie that into the brown wire on your effect or on your new wiring that you're putting in. Since it has a turn signal, red wire is going to be connected to yellow, black is going to brown, white I'm going to ground I'm going to use the exist, one of the existing holes to mount this light. I'm going to put a ring terminal on it. I'm going to ground it right behind the light, right through that screw hole where it touches the frame. Black to running lights. Red for your turn signal. white and be ground and I'm going to put on a small ring terminal. Ring terminals don't come in your kit also so if you're replacing a light ring terminals you will have to pick up. Now we'll take our heat source shrink up our butt connectors. What I like to do is Run some electrical tape around these uh, heat shrink buck connectors. If you do it while the buck connector is still warm, the glue on the tape will actually uh, stick and it'll help seal it even better. Because sometimes, these look pretty good, but sometimes buck connectors will be a little bit weak right here and you'll see a gap uh, where it's opened up to the metal. So, Put some electrical tape on there again, glue will kind of help seal that hole up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my next side marker light, go ahead and start pulling this wiring through. It's a good idea to have a second person up here kind of feed it through so it doesn't get caught on that metal edge. Now we'll take our butt connectors, our remaining wire, go ahead and slide it into the frame rail. My ground wire. Put the screw. Again, I'm going to use the existing hole for one of them. Put my ground wire right on the back of it. Put your lens on, then we can move back to the next side marker light. Once we're done with this one, now we can move back to our tail light. Now we're going to have extra wiring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave probably about a foot of it. That way when we attach it to our light, we can take the extra shove it back into the frame and if for some reason we ever have to uh, wire breaks off or something we can, we have enough that we can pull out and we can 
restrip it and reattach a new connector and connect it to our light. Uh, we don't have to add any wiring to it. Now we'll do the same thing here. Strip back each wire. Add in our tail light. Be the same colors. Again, heat shrink butt connectors. Once you get your wires connected, you can go ahead and either mount your new light or reinstall your tail light. Once you're done with one side, repeat the process on the other, and we can go and test everything, make sure it's working correctly. Now you've got it hooked up to an alternate power source, but it would simulate being hooked up to your vehicle. So you can see that our blinker is working on our running lights. Now we can go back and check our rear light and make sure our blinker is working back there. And then we'll come back and we'll test out and make sure our running lights are working. Once we know all of our lights are working correctly, we're ready to go. It's gonna do it for look at and installation. Optitronics, four pole, wishbone, wiring harness.